I think there's something to be said for finding your calling and regardless of what it makes that you do it because we tend to be very good at the things we like doing that call to us you know it's Joseph Campbell's call to adventure this idea that you were saying you have a mother figure a father figure and then this uncle this master the sensei that calls you to adventure and shows you a way that you could do things differently but it's going to require a lot of you and I think we all desire that we all desire that call to adventure that to be tested and that there's demons we'll have to face on the way and we would be transformed if only we went through that process that's the downward Doug and this is the Yoga Life podcast what's up everyone how's it going hopefully the dust has settled from episode 32 that solo effort i had last week where i talked about why you shouldn't be a yoga teacher it's a bit controversial but sometimes important topics are but this week i have with me an absolute gentleman one of my favorite guests ever on the yoga life podcast because he was so fun so authentic, so honest, the downward Doug. Although this podcast is called The Yoga Life Podcast, and I do interview people in the yoga world, it's interesting to talk about things outside of yoga. And um, not everyone is comfortable speaking on a microphone, conscious that they're being recorded. But Doug is not the shy type. He's comfortable in front of the mic. The guy is a stuntman. <laughs> never met one before so um yeah he's a, he's a stunt man he's done a little bit of acting he teaches a style of yoga uh, called warrior yoga which incorporates martial arts so he's got a martial arts background which is really interesting and uh he's also from botswana i know i didn't know where it was either so <laughs> and if you're from botswana sorry i just yeah don't hear much about it in in ireland but um he had a really interesting backstory and uh, i hope you in enjoy the conversation if you do as always please leave a review on itunes and you can get in touch with me with any questions that you have i hope you uh, have fun listening to myself and doug narrow away and um yeah here's doug so doug talk to me welcome hey kevin i'm super excited about this i mean <laughs> listeners out there might think oh th what's happened is Kevin's been on the lookout for the most influential yoga teachers out there, interesting people, people with a story, got something to say, and uh, that's how they come across me. But that is a, just a lie. <laughs> what happened is I saw Kevin doing amazing things with people I respected, <laughs> and being the chancer I am, I was like, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna DM him up yeah. and ask him, can I be on there? So yeah. that's how this actually came about. All right, yeah. I yeah. asked him just, just for the record, everyone. <laughs> well, well, Joe, but Doug, that works really well because it's. If you want to speak, that's that's so important. Like it's only, I mean, the, as we were saying earlier, the these episodes are only as interesting as the dynamic between the two people. Mm -hmm. And and I think a lot of people who maybe aren't as familiar with this new type of media, podcasting, they don't consume podcasts. They're very self conscious of being recorded. And you know, you're you're really good at, for example, you do a lot of Instagram stories. So you're you're really confident in front of a camera. Are you are you an actor? As in like you're a stunt man. I'm a stunt man, but I what I'm a stunt man is, just saying no. <laughs> yeah, no big deal. So that's the thing on the side. It's it's a it's a weird two lines I uh, live on at the moment. So the stunt thing is funny though because I got acting parts from it, which I never sought out to get, but it becomes like a joke among stunt guys. You ask them to fall over, fall off something, set themselves on fire, scary stuff. They're like, Yeah, yeah, let's do it, you know? You ask them to talk in front of the camera. Like, nah, you know what, I'm going to leave that one out. You can mm -hmm. hear the grumbles. No one wants to actually do it. So it becomes like a running joke on sets where your boss will be like, all right, you know, Doug, you love talking, all right? You're going to say something now. Expecting there to be like an embarrassment. And yeah. I quickly realized after a few of those incidents um, that it's how you own it. So there's two options. Either you can kind of go into your shell a little bit and half ass it. Yeah. And like anything, when you don't commit... It's just people feel that embarrassment and mm -hmm. they feel it for you mm -hmm. where you can do the opposite, where you can go all out. Mm. And admittedly, a few times I maybe went too far out with uh, the lines they gave me or whatever. But if you own it, people are like, ah, if he's not embarrassed, I won't be embarrassed. Exactly. You know, and there's yeah. a lot to be said. And I think the same happens with teaching. You feel when a, when a teacher isn't confident, you feel it. It resonates off them mm -hmm. and you lose confidence in them. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm trying to learn more and more is that 
no one actually knows what you're about to teach for that day. Mm. So when I miss out something I was going to teach, I'm like, oh man, I forgot that thing. Mm. They don't know. Like just use yeah. the class and you don't have to teach what you wrote down. Yeah. I think a big thing learning, I'm a very new teacher and you're always talking about how this medium is good for new teachers and a lot of new teachers listen to this. But that's a hard thing to learn is to step away from the structure that you've put in place and mm. read the class, mm -hmm. you know. But to answer your question, yes, I've had some yeah. some acting roles, which I think helps being in front of camera. Mm. But Instagram stories is another beast because you're doing it in public. I still, if you saw, I wish you could see kind of the minutes before I do the, the post and afterwards. I kind of look up and down the street first to make sure no one's walking <laughs> because I just can't. I'm of the age where Instagram wasn't a thing and now it's a thing. Yeah. So I feel ridiculous still talking into my phone. Yeah. And like, you know, on camera, on, on a microphone, you've got to... You've got to be more because it takes like 20% off you. Mm. You know, if you give your normal energy, it comes across a bit flat. Mm -hmm. You've got to really present it. Definitely. I mean, you've got 15, is it 15 seconds? 15 seconds. Yeah, that stresses me out. No end. That's a skill in itself. I, what I have realized with podcasting is I tend to speak quite slowly, generally. I'm like... Some people think I'm a little bit dopey because I have big pauses, <laughs> big pauses in, you know, in between when I say things. And that's why the 15 second story thing doesn't suit me because I don't get it all in. Um, but you, as you said, you have to give almost like a turbo version of yourself mm -hmm. because as well, I mean, look at the medium. People have the phone in their hand. They're flicking, flicking, flicking. Sorry about no that. Worries, yeah, no worries. Just, that was just <laughs> That's me what... smashing the cup of tea down in, in celebration of how good it is. Yeah. Like a Viking. Yeah. Yeah. Good at stories, uh, terrible at podcasts. We're smashing things. <laughs> no, it's all good. Um, but it's the medium and understanding the skill behind it. Like I have been told off by people for preaching about how Instagram is a photography platform. And I think that, if you're going to post photographs, they should say something interesting anyway, or, or at least be aesthetically pleasing. And some people don't feel that's important, which, which is fair enough. Mm -hmm. But I do think the message you're giving should, or how you deliver it, should work well with the medium it's going through. Mm -hmm. um, and therefore, uh, stories, it's really important to be like, bang, bang, bang. And you're talking to the camera and you're very getting that message across because you know people's attention span is flick it to the next one absolutely and i think that's a problem mm -hmm. it is um yeah it is it, yeah. It, this idea it's the same you know you're talking about you wanting well doing your videos your yoga videos too and uh once you start getting into that you'll start to look at your analytics and you'll look at audience retention audience retention rather and uh people drop off like that you've got to get them in early tell them what you're going to give them and produce it because otherwise mm. they just stop watching you know, reading books now, the ability to read a book, it, you'll be hard pressed to find people that want to read a book mm -hmm. because the satisfaction is a delayed satisfaction. Mm. And um, mm, yeah. speaking of which, you know, you're talking about books to read, Sapiens, fantastic book, mm -hmm. you know, but it takes time. Mm -hmm. It's not a quick read. Mm. And sometimes you have to stop and kind of think about it. Well, I did at least. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm just a dummy. I was like, right, I have to compute what he just said because I need to test out if that's true in my life. Mm. And for the most part... Well, all of it I did. I found it fascinating. But that ability to delay satisfaction or gratification is something, it's a tool of growing up. You know, mm. it's something we learn as children. To become an adult, you have to delay gratification. To become an adult, to actually do something worthwhile. Yeah. You, you know from editing this, not particularly fun. It's going to take some time. Mm. But the end product is enjoyable because it took time. Yeah. And things like Instagram are giving us this satisfaction, but it's very shallow each time. That like is a little endorphin hit hit mm. hit but it's 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 not substantial it's got no legs to it mm. so that that combination is a problem i think and i think as yogis it's particularly hard because we're trying to teach this idea of mindfulness through this medium of mindlessness <laughs> Man, it's that's mental so, that's so that's the biggest irony isn't it in the in this yoga industry you're trying to teach people to be present and to not um, be seduced by aesthetics but yeah that's what that platform promotes yeah, it is <laughs> but then it's tough I, I mean Nelson Mandela spoke about it in Long Walk to Freedom about this guilt of using a system that was built on how can I say it? this this white system from abroad that really oppressed them but he was using the tools of their education to bring them down 
Mm. And that's kind of how I see what we need to do. You use that platform as a way to show people that there's another way. Mm -hmm. Get the interest in the world that they're living to take them out of it. Yeah. I mean, because Instagram's not going to go anywhere. And and I uh, I think, or it's just going to morph into something else. Yeah. And I am very, I'm fascinated by social media and how it affects the social structure of our society, the fabric of our society. And there's no, I don't, I don't think you're not, and there's a point in becoming a Luddite and, or, and mm. saying, okay, I reject all technology because you need to learn how to manage it and mm -hmm. understand when you're using it excessively. I, um, for me, using Instagram now has become a vehicle to promote this podcast. Absolutely. Because I think in terms of building a, showing my truest self, I can do it best through this medium. Mm -hmm. um, for for many different reasons, because, yeah, for for many reasons. But um, you're a podcast fan, aren't you? Absolutely love them. <laughs> I mean, I'm a fiend. You're a fiend. E Erica is always like, how do you listen to all of that? I'm like, because I put it on no matter what I'm doing. If I'm washing mm -hmm. dishes, there's a podcast on. If I go for a walk, there's a podcast on. And I just, I've always been someone who likes consuming information. And for a long time, there was a lot of mind, mindless information out there, boring stuff like you know, you had to watch whatever was on TV. And now we've got this medium where you can actually extract information. Mm -hmm. Like people are telling you interesting facts. And I find that fascinating. Mm -hmm. You know, and podcasts, you know, we were talking about it before, just before we started about how you were saying there's a real medium for podcasts and they're on the rise. And you like to just sometimes listen to Joe Rogan in the background. And it links to some of you said, I think with uh, Patrick Beach, where you were saying the older you get, the more lonely you get. And I think that's true across the board, not just as old you get, but we're becoming more insular by the day. Like the technology is allowing us to customize everything to us. So we don't compromise anymore. I want to watch this now. Therefore, I have YouTube there. I can put on that video. I don't mm. even want to wait for TV to tell me what I can watch. When it comes to how you live your life, you can choose any class you want. You don't even have to pay memberships. You pay one of class. It's all custom. The phone is called an iPhone. It's all about <laughs> me in this world, all right? Which is fine. And it's... It's a luxury in a way, but you realize it's relying on someone else or being relied on that gives you a purpose in life or gives you a relationship. You know, that's a nice thing to have. Mm -hmm. And the more self-dependent we get, the more lonely we get. So mm. my theory with the podcast and things is I realize when I listen to it, um, I, I think you, you live alone. No, my girlfriend lives girlfriend. Okay, just, so. just recently moved in. So before that, you'll know I live alone uh, back home and you just realize there's this longing for communication and when I listen to podcasts without knowing I probably feel like I know Joe Rogan as a friend mm. you know I'm getting to know these people because I'm I'm being privy to their conversation I think that rise of loneliness and then the rise of consuming podcasts are related because we want to have these conversations but we're living in ways where we don't allow ourselves well you could have the conversation you could go for dinner with your friends but we don't do it. Well, actually, Doug, and it's re I'm really glad you said this because just before you were coming here, I was t just tidying up the house. You know, when you have a guest, you tidy that's the entire time I tidy that. <laughs> I tidy the place. Um, and I was listening to Joe Rogan in the background and I was thinking that he's a bit like the uncle I never had. Yeah. And if you grow up and you don't, I mean, I'm not, there's no reflection on my mum or dad, like they're, they're great and stuff, but I'm saying every it's i've heard that every boy growing up needs their father figure but then also like a coach figure mm -hmm. that's generally how it progresses or a master or a sensei yeah and you know uh listening to joe rogan he has helped me com completely change my mindset about my life and how i feel as, as a man as a human being mm -hmm. completely like it's um made the difference between me making fundamental decisions in my life that god love say my parents or my elders they are not as in, maybe insightful in terms of that their, their advice would be when i was growing up just get a job in a bank you'd be all right yeah. and that's that's it that's and they, the best they could exactly but, it's true to them mm, to their experience absolutely yeah. but but he's but joe rogan is he, he's a, he's um he's an anomaly mm. he's he's a for want of a better phrase, he's a man's man, mm -hmm. but yet he's can be so sensitive. Yeah. Um, he's, he's he's like Oprah for guys. Yeah, and he's interested <laughs> in so many things, mm. you know. And he introduced you because you trust him. He's 
without being mean, he's generic enough that you go, ah, you know, I can, Joe, yeah, he looks like a, a normal enough guy. He's not some sort of geek. He's not so into it. Well, in the way he is, but mm-hmm. he doesn't, he doesn't uh, allude to the fact that he is that. Mm-hmm. So you go like, oh, okay, he's sound. I can trust him. Mm-hmm. And he gets his people on. You think, okay, quantum physics with Sean Carroll. All right, let's see what that's about. And you listen, mm-hmm. you're like, that is fascinating. And yeah. you find you broaden your horizons. Like you said, he gives you this access. He is the key to all those other genres you never even thought about. Mm-hmm. And I think it's great. And it opens up your mind to think of these new ways and other things you may be interested in. Mm-hmm. And that's great. But he's also great with critical thinking, not taking things at face value. Mm. And also unashamedly honest. Mm. His long form conversation allows him to delve into these subjects that we're really shy away from in mainstream media Mm -hmm. because for the fear of God that we just upset someone who is preaching tolerance and is intolerant of what we say, which is the biggest irony in this PC culture, (laughs) but it allows it. And he's unapologetic about it. Mm. You know, he says, this is how I feel. This is what the data says. So on. So I find that very interesting. Mm. And in a world that is becoming more and more restricted on what we can and cannot say, Mm. I I think to our own detriment, um, it's great to have that outlet. And also that the medium itself allows that because if he was to say what he said, all the stuff he says in tweets. In a soundbite. In a soundbite. Oh. It can get so misunderstood. And I, I feel that, um, you know, I was talking about this in the in the episode I did recently about why you, sh- you shouldn't be a yoga, yoga teacher. teacher. And um, how people want, when you have this thing, Instagram, which is like, an art gallery of your life you you are you're producing art you know you're producing this feed the, these little stories and i think it it shouldn't uh reflect your your life it should reflect a ver- it, it reflects a version of your life mm-hmm. because p it sh- it's an art form it's different to real life but at the same time i find it hard to maintain um an image Mm-hmm. And and I oh because I, I don't know what image I'm trying to put across, yeah. and I just find with, with these conversations I can get get on a deeper level, um, and plus as well it's it's very in, very intimate. I mean people have it in their headphones or they have it in their car. Yeah, I never thought about that. You're right. You're, but, you're, the headphones does put it right. It's like injecting straight into your brain. You know, there's, <laughs> there's nothing in the way. It's like boom. I feel bad now for being yeah. in people's brains. Brain, you that's know it. I mean? Hey, I'm here too. It's all right. <laughs> this is good. It's very roomy in here. <laughs> <laughs> no offense. Yeah. Um, so, Doug, mm. you, you mentioned Erica. This mm-hmm. is your, your SO. Uh, my SO. Go Significant on. other. Oh, that, nice. I should, I'm better. I, should be I just learned that. that the other day. Very good. Yeah. Well, your girlfriend put you onto it, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah, you see. That's where we learn our best stuff. <laughs> Girlfriends, they always. Uh, and you're, you're in Dublin for the whole weekend? Yeah. Well, I'm in Dublin, but I'm also going to, Bel- I'm going to Belfast to Flow Studio tomorrow mm. um doing a bit of traveling like so i'm trying to whenever i travel somewhere i want to do some teaching and very much this mm. is a business trip for me mm. i i want to really focus on my teaching uh, as you mentioned before i work as a stuntman but i've actually taken the three-month hiatus just i realize you don't get good at anything by doing it a bit like i want to really engross myself in it so currently teaching in london i I pretty much take on any cover they've got i'm like i'll take it i'll take it early shift i'll take it you know and i want to get good at it so these weekends are away for me also to do these workshops to immerse myself in that and promote who I am and my brand and, and the things I'm doing, the retreats, the workshops, the teaching, hmm. um, and just to practice my skill uh, again, better as a teacher. So we'll be going to Belfast to answer your question and then back to Dublin Yoga Hub, which has always been so good to me. Like there's something about that studio. Yoga Hub. Yoga Hub. The minute I walked in, Erica, you know, the SO, she introduced me to Matt and Susie. And they were so, like, within minutes, they were like, yeah, you got to come teach down here. Mm. No mm. sort of like, oh, I don't know. They were like, sure, mm-hmm. come down. And mm. I, I really appreciated that, you know. Mm. Is Flow Studio big? Because the only other time I heard of them was when Jason Crandall was teaching yeah. his they workshop. Love, they love Jason. And Patrick's been there a few times. Right. They're booking some, some guests. I actually went to go see Patrick. Speaking of Erica, I met Erica. Our first date was at Patrick Beach's class at Wellfest. Your first date? Our first date. So you arranged to go there together? Get out. I went to Lee Tracy's class the day before. Yeah. Sat in the front row, sat next to Erica. And um, Lee Tracy was teaching. Then we hung out afterwards and she's one of her students. We started chatting and then she was like, well, why don't we come back tomorrow? And we'll do Patrick's class together. Mm -hmm. And we did. 
And my friend Faisal was doing like the hit class later, so we went to that class together. Faisal, Faisal oh Pina, yeah, yeah. Good friend of mine. We started <laughs> as extras together, uh, very close friends on that film set uh, called John Carter of Mars. This movie that tanked. John, tank- K- John Carter of Mars. <laughs> you know what's crazy? You're talking about Japan. It's massive in Japan. They <laughs> okay. finally turned a profit when they went to DVD. All right. But we met on that job. So anyway, so I had seen her there, and uh, I met Patrick Beach in person, and I stopped him. I at the time was working on Game of Thrones in Belfast, came down just for the weekend to see the lay of the land. Um, and I think I was teaching at Little Lemon that Sunday or maybe the next week, something like that. And I saw Patrick and I literally walked in the same time he was, and he was just in front of me. And I was with my mate who knows nothing about yoga, Dan Houston, good friend of mine. And he was like, I was like, Matt, you don't understand. That's Patrick Beach. It's Patrick <laughs> Beach. And I was like, he's got the face of Jesus. Look at him. Just, <laughs> he's got that such the kind face. You know, you just look at him and you're like, oh man, I just want to stroke his face. He's just, so I stopped him and I was like, Patrick, I'll go, you like. Did you say you stopped him or stalked I him? Sto- a bit of both. Column okay. A, column B. Okay. <laughs> Who knows the difference by the end, you know? Stopped him and I was like, I've got to tell you, you were my inspiration to get into yoga. I was like, it can be a masculine thing and it can be very impressive. And, and it's weird. He's fierce with his practice. And so gentle with his speech. Yeah. It's a weird dynamic. It's a weird dichotomy. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I will say this. I, I got obsessed with the way he says downward facing. He goes, downward facing, dog. <laughs> so next time, and if you're listening, Patrick, I just, I absolutely love that. He's got the, I don't know, it must be the Seattle accent. But yeah, so Flow Studio, it is bigger. They've actually got three studios now in Belfast. Mm. One's in Hollywood, which is wicked, just outside Belfast. Okay. The one in Cathedral Quarter in Belfast itself is right next door to established coffee too, which is right, really nice, mm. really nice area, beautiful studio and very well run. I'm, so get down there if you can, if you're in Belfast. I've never been to Belfast. Oh man, you've got to go. It's why, you know, <laughs> apart from flow studio. <laughs> well, the, a couple of reasons. All right. So obviously we're working there. The last few years we've had to work there. That's where Game of Thrones was based. Studios were based there and we'd go abroad for the other parts, the castles, stuff like that. But, the town is small, kind of like Dublin. You can walk everywhere, but even smaller. The community is small, so you see everyone, you get to know people. And you were saying before uh, on the other podcast about how we've got to the stage where things are too big and we don't know our neighbors. They're small enough that they know their neighbors. There's a real community. Hmm. You go clubbing, by the way, Alibi Club, one of the funnest places you'll ever go to for the same reasons. Hmm. You know people. There's a friendliness. You would have recognized people from the stores that you were at that day. And people wanted to, they want to chat. Wow. You know, the Irish people in general are lovely. Mm-hmm. In Belfast, it, you know, the same. Just a beautiful place. It's got a lot going on. And I think it's on the rise, if I'm okay. honest. Yeah, I've got to check it out. It's like two hours on the train or something, is it? Forget the train, but get the bus. The bus is like seven quid and it's like an hour 20. Really? Yeah, maybe a little bit more. Maybe an hour 30 for the longer buses. It's well easy. Okay. That's how I used to commute back and forth from Belfast to Dublin. And uh, it's a nice bus with Wi-Fi. <laughs> I'm sorry. Again, again I'm sold. with the sponsors, mate. I'm I'm teeing you up here. All right? You just need to follow up on all of these that I mentioned. Um, I actually contacted a, a company today about uh, a, a coffee company, asking if they would in- be interested in being a sponsor. Mm. Yeah. Any news back? Well, it's just I haven't even sent them a proposal yet. But um, I thought, why not? You mate, know, I'm telling you. Think be- about me beverage. getting hold of you, like. Just yeah. to, you throw it out there. Yeah. The thing is, so many people are going to tell you no in your life. Don't be one of them. Yeah. You know. Try- I, I mean, the way I see it, if you if you use a product, then and you that uh, I, I particularly like supporting like uh, local companies. Man. So so we'll see. But um, so you're uh, when <laughs> when you came well, when you rang the doorbell, um, I was googling Botswana mm-hmm. because man. I had an idea where it was and. Um, why did you move to London from Botswana? Well, I wasn't even straight from there. I'll tell you what. I, so, born and raised in Botswana, and you've done a good thing. You kind of know where it is. Mm-hmm. That's normally the biggest conversation stopper I can do. Where are you from, Botswana? Dead silence. Because <laughs> either people are too embarrassed, or they're like, mm, I don't know about that. You know, look that Botswana or Botswana. Um, grew up there, but I've got to be honest, I've always liked city. Like, I feel like in a small town that I grew up in, I always felt like I was missing out. So for me, it was like, I need to get out. So I went to the States first, worked there for a while, then came to London. And um, I just like that. I like the energy of a city. Mm. I like the opportunity. It just feels like bigger cities that anything could happen. You could do anything. 
you know, and maybe it's yeah. a misnomer, maybe it's a complete myth, but I feel that. Mm. And what you feel can often become the reality. Mm -hmm. And that's very much the opportunity afforded to me in London um, with the movie work. It's like people think it's all based in Hollywood. Majority of films are filmed in the UK. Right. Yeah. It's unknown, but they get a tax break of like 20% mm -hmm. for filming here. So a lot of them are based here. They might do bits out there, but they're based here. So we get the biggest movies coming through here. So it's a great opportunity mm. to do it. Um, what well, I, what's the what's the um, sorry to interrupt mm. you, but before I forget, what's the the thing I was googling that that uh, ethnicity of people? <coughs> Swana. Swana people. Swana. So How? Botswana means people of the Swana. So ah. Swana is the like tribe, and then if you're from that country, a little known fact, but it gets confusing because you get like Britain, British, Ireland, Irish, and you try to use the same uh, format for that doesn't work out. It's you're from Botswana, you're a Motswana. A you, a Mot Swana, M O T Swana. Okay. Because you're part of that tribe, you're one of them. Which mm -hmm. I love that inclusion. Like it's it's a yeah, it's a nice feeling, and that's it's an interesting country because it's all one tribe, the whole country. So I mean, I, pff, this may be testing the knowledge of, of most people about Africa, but Africa was very much drawn up on a map in Austria under some king. Like they just got sick of fighting when they got to Africa, all the different European countries, and they're like, guys. It's killing our resources. Can we just get together? We'll draw up the map and we'll say whose is whose. And that's why Africa's full of straight lines. Like wow. your borders are normally based on your mountain ranges or your rivers. You know, you look at Africa, it starts like on the outsides and then just starts going like straight lines. Mm -hmm. And they divided and dissected entire families now separated by a border that shouldn't be there. Or you put in groups of people that don't get along and contain them within borders. So, that in itself caused a lot of problems. Lucky enough for Botswana, that didn't happen. So mm. we just have the Botswana. Mm. And as a result, the racial tension between tribes is not apparent. We haven't had any world wars, or world wars, any tribal wars, any civil wars. Um, nothing like apartheid. It's just, it's a fabulous country. Like, and very gentle people and very kind people. Do you miss it? I miss my mom. You know, she loves it there. She's always saw that as a place. It's funny. My home... It's different. For you guys, you could literally go back to visit the house you grew up in. If I went back to the town I grew up in, it was a diamond mine owned by De Beers that you lived in a house that De Beers gave you. So if I went back, it would resemble nothing of the place I grew up in. What's, For most of us, I guess. What's De Beers? That sounds... De Beers familiar. is the biggest uh, diamond mine in the world. Oh, wow. Okay. The Oppenheimers own a family own all the diamonds basically 80% mm. of the world's diamonds something like that oh, don't quote me on that like I said we need a Jamie yeah, <laughs> Check <those> Jamie, facts. yeah. <laughs> but the um, yeah the country itself got very rich on the diamonds which is great um, and it's great for tourism stuff like that but I don't miss it because it's not my place like I feel like I'm stagnating when I'm there so I go back to see my mom um, and she feels differently she feels that's where she's inspired Mm. And uh, it always feels bad for me because I would love my mom, like you're saying, these communities of people living closer together. I'm kind of always jealous of big Indian families or Italian families or Greek families when they mm. have these big meals. And even though they're shouting at each other, I'm like, it's so nice that they, mm. they have each other. Mm -hmm. you know? And in an ideal world, I'd love the whole family to live together. But she feels the same way about the UK as I feel about Botswana. So we're, we're in this quagmire. But we kind of oh. compromise. She comes to visit here, I go visit there. Mm -hmm. What about the rest of your family? You got brothers and sisters. My brothers in uh, my brothers in UK too. He's in London, just outside. Mm -hmm. So I see him. He's got a little boy and a little girl, mm -hmm. um, Matthew and Iris, mm -hmm. and then his wife, South African. So I get to see him too, which mm -hmm. is great. Um, and that I think that softens the blow to have some family, mm -hmm. you know. But then it makes it harder because my mom is a Botswana owner. Mm -hmm. Luckily for us, she's I don't want to say a misanthrope. That's not correct. It's not that she doesn't like people, but she likes her own company. What does that mean, misanthrope? Misanthrope. Uh, you you have a, you despise humanity. You don't like. Oh wow. People. Yeah. <laughs> so most people sometimes get confused between people that are like they like to be on their own. Some people like to be on their own because they don't like other people. Some people like to be on their own just because they prefer mm. that quiet. My mom's like that. Mm. She likes her own place. It's funny. She her biggest like mind moment is when she sees me on TV and she's like. I can't believe my son would want to be in front of a camera that's then going to go out to other people because mm. to her, that's the worst idea ever. She's mm. like, I can think of nothing worse than mm. being in front of a crowd, let alone a camera. Mm. Like it is a little bit like this or a little bit like teaching. 
Mm. It's very personal. It's very, uh, it's all about you, you know, and all eyes are on you. And some people like it. Some people don't. And some people that are good don't like it. And some people that are, that do like it aren't good at it. it you know. Mm. I mean, my, when I speak to my mum or dad about what I do, they just don't really get it. They don't uh, like understand why would I make videos? Why would I do these podcasts? And uh, the, the, their assessment of if it's valuable is how much money does it make? But, <laughs> it's such a different world now yeah. compared to when they were growing up. It, the the internet's changed everything. It has. You, you it's are, blown it wide open. Yeah, you're your own publicist, you're your own market, marketeer, you're a manager. Um, and I, you, were, you were saying earlier before we started recording how when you're standing in front of a class of people, you feel sick with nerves some, yeah. sometimes. And for most people, they would just say, no, sod this I don't, I'm, why would I put myself through that yeah but um, but I think that that's that's really what it comes down to doesn't it in mm. terms of do you make a living from it yeah and that's a, that's a weird <laughs> metric you know for, for life if your life was worthwhile is do you make money off it it's, it's an unfortunate truth of life but it is an unfortunate metric mm. as an example people that play video games up until probably five years ago the same metric could be applied there's no point in doing it because you make no money. Mm. Now you look at those guys, they're making over a million dollars a year. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of the one thing that really appeals to me about the American spirit is that it doesn't matter what you are, just be good or be the best at what that thing is. Mm -hmm. Whether that's lawnmower racing or cutting down trees or playing games or being an athlete, they have that mentality. Mm -hmm. I think there's something to be said for finding your calling and regardless of what it makes that you do it. Because we tend to be very good at the things we like doing that call to us. Mm -hmm. You know, it's Joseph Campbell's call to adventure. This idea that you're saying you have a mother figure, a father figure, and then this uncle, this master, the sensei that calls mm -hmm. you to adventure mm -hmm. and shows you a way that you could do things differently, mm -hmm. but it's going to require a lot of you. Mm -hmm. And I think we all desire that. We all desire that call to adventure, that to be tested, and that there's demons we'll have to face on the way. And we would be transformed if only we went through that process. Mm. And that's something that's innate in us. And that's why we are attracted to the movies that we are and the books. And those fables have been around mm. since before Christ. Mm. You know, tens of thousands of years ago, we've been appealing to those stories. And the mm. same thing applies now. Mm. And it's so funny. That thing, like I was saying to you, that nervousness to me is also a sign that I'm in the right place. You yeah. know, that it's that I care enough that it makes me nervous, that I want to give all the students the best class they have. Erica always gets upset with me because she's like, my barometer is that if no one comes to me after the class to say, thank you, I really enjoyed it, I'm kind of gutted. Like, not, not for my ego, but I'm like, oh, did they enjoy it? Because you must know from teaching, sometimes you don't get a lot back in the face. Oh, yeah. Because I know when I practice, I'm straight face. And when I go stern face, I look kind of like an axe murderer, you know, mm. shaved head and the beard doesn't help either. <laughs> but you look at their faces and you're like, hmm. Is everyone, is everyone enjoying this? Mm. Like is, and sometimes they will come to you often. They're like, I really enjoy it. You're like, it's so hard to tell that feedback. Mm. Mm. I think that's part of being a good teacher is knowing that feedback. Also doing your class regardless, mm. you know, teaching them something because they came and giving them something mm. that was useful. I mean, you've been doing this so longer than I have. How long have you been a teacher? Like two years, barely. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Right. But, but, but it's funny you say that because I was saying to my girlfriend yesterday, I have to appreciate I can't be everything to everyone. Mm. So there'll be someone down the back of the class with just mm. resting bitch face. Mm. Um, do you know, I actually, or, and I'm, when I say bitch, I mean like, it could be any gender. Yeah, no, uh, I, I, and I mean all the genders. Right? Oh, yeah. go. Don't get me started. <laughs> yeah, come on. So, uh, <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so they'll, they'll have that. Actually, you know, funny, just a quick one on this PC, yeah. PC thing, actually. I was just, ju just listening to the Yoga Land podcast, Jason Crandall and his. Oh, and can I stop you there to interject? I listen to all those podcasts, right? Yoga Land, The Balanced Blonde. I still think this is better. Yeah, I man. I, could, I was surprised, Kevin, because I know this is, you know, a new thing for you. But I, I listened to that. It was just so much more sincere. I was like, I, this I want to carry on listening to. I feel like I'm privy to this conversation. I feel like I'm in the room. So, you know, props to you. Wow, man. Thanks a lot. That's a big praise. Um, cheers, Doug. Man. I no appreciate worries. it, mate. Um, so I was listening to it just now and they used the term resting bitch face and she, Andrea said it and then she supposedly Jason was mortified that she said bitch. You know, you shouldn't say that word and mm. then they abbreviated to 
R B F whatever R B F and I, I, I thought I thought come on man like it's, let, let's just chill out a little bit we've it, lost context that's what's happened and yes. with context we've lost sense of humour yeah. so no no longer is important the context in which you said a word it just matters that you said the word therefore you must be you know sexist or racist or an mm. oppressor instead of going like what if I was just relaying what someone else said like yeah. no context doesn't matter like the context mm. is so important. It's so important. Otherwise, teachers that teach about Nazi Germany are then also by proxy Nazis. Mm -hmm. We can't get into that world. Yeah, yeah. And the problem is that is the slippery slope we are on currently. Mm. And we need to check ourselves. You know, we need to have freedom of thought and freedom of speech. Yeah. Man. Wow. Do you All know, right. I just, no, no, this is a good I one. Had a vent. No, Doug, I like the path you're on and I'm, I'm beside you mm -hmm. on this path because... This is, again, we're talking about this. We're not supporting it. We're just discussing it. Yes, and this is important. Mm -hmm. We've stopped being able to even have a thought before someone goes, that's wrong. Mm -hmm. You should be able to think freely so you can even maybe come around to the idea that, oh, no, that was a stupid idea. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But if you don't have that ability, you don't even get around to that. Yeah, and, yeah. You, can't, and you can't, I mean, how do you, you communicate ideas via discussions? Via, and, and important issues are Hard. will cause offence sometimes to a, a minority of people sometimes, yeah. or one person. And, uh, and the more people you're sharing that message to, the higher the probability of more people being offend, offended. But, um, and I'm really conscious of this because for, when I first started teaching yoga, I was quite generic in my speech and mm. I didn't show my personality at all because I was, didn't know how to Amen. act. I had no role models. Uh, all the role models I had were very floaty in their yeah. language and hippies. And, and it might not have felt right to you, but you're like, that's what I've heard, so that must be the right thing. Yeah, exactly. And, and I was so like, well, I'm not a hippie and I'm not floaty. I can't think of a better word than that. No, so, I get what you mean though. Flowery, <laughs> flowery. in speech. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Quiet, soft. Yeah. Yeah. And float your hand. Yeah. And I'm not like referring to any gender here. I'm just talking about style. But also... That can be true to someone. Yes, but absolutely. I knew that it wasn't true to me, and I felt yeah. myself in that same feeling of being a fraud, going like, "This isn't me." Like I don't even mm. recognize that person. Mm. But I think in order to do your best, you you can't hide your natural uh, nature, your mm. nature. And um, people like I've never actually met him, but do you ever met Stuart Gilchrist? Mm, yeah. Uh, yes. Hold the on. Long gray hair, dreadlocks. No. But yeah. I know he is a friend of mine goes to his classes. Um, yeah. He's very good, isn't he? He's supposed to be amazing. Yeah. But he, supposedly he like, um, will be a bit controversial, say stuff that mm -hmm. he'll like maybe drop the F-bomb and this type of thing. And I, I, I really respect that. I'm like, he just doesn't give a shit, basically. My mum has always said that she said, it, the brave people aren't the ones that you see saying, uh, you know, the climate's going down, we need to recycle, you know. I'm anti-rape and you know, like all these things very, you know, virtue singly going, I'm against these obvious bad things. I respect more than people that, not that they, I just like people having different ideas. That's why even someone like the flat earthers, I appreciate <laughs> them because they're putting forward an alternate argument. Mm. You know, they're not being sucked in, but whatever's around, they've at least given the thought to it. Well, some of them, because mm -hmm. we have a few that I work with on set. You can imagine on a film set, you're there for 16 hours conversations come up mm -hmm. and we get some guys are flat earthers and i'm okay with that i don't like the idea of people saying oh you guys must be idiots because you believe in that i don't like that either mm. but if i ask you to expand on your theory and you go i don't know just because like you know globes i'm like no like <laughs> if you're gonna believe in something get the information yeah and i looked into it and i was like actually the stuff is quite compelling if you have certain caveats about how far the earth is away from the sun then some of it makes sense. Mm -hmm. But even they didn't know that. Mm -hmm. And it's just the same idea that how many of the things do we believe in that we don't know? And for instance, I didn't understand why the earth had to be round. I had mm -hmm. just accepted that. Mm -hmm. And I think the flat earth movement is less about them saying that this is definitely the way and more about them saying to you, do you even know what you believe and why? Mm -hmm. And that's, that's worthwhile. Yeah, yeah, because it, it forces you to re-examine something you just think for granted. And that's why conversations and debates and people challenging are so good. Mm -hmm. But we can't have challenging each other when we go, you're not allowed to talk to, because you're a white male mm -hmm. who's got white privilege, so therefore you are discluded from this conversation. Mm -hmm. That's not how we get better. I, I will say, though, I do think it's great that people are becoming more... Um, conscientious about how they make other people feel i think that's great yeah We're becoming um maybe more sensitive for because we realize that we can say something that's viewed by millions of people straight away but mm. i do worry about the policing of, of language and 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 because we are 
professional communicators. Yeah, yeah. And you, you, what else is a teacher? You, you're given this platform once a week, twice a week, five times a week, where you get to tell people what you think, mm. you know? And I think that can't be taken lightly. Mm-hmm. You know, you've got to think about your message when you put forward. And that's what I've been trying to do now with my classes more is having a theme or message to go along with what we're doing mm. so that it becomes an art form. Like you mm-hmm. watch a good music movie or a good soundtrack or anything like that. They're compelling, telling you stories in different layers. The mm-hmm. drums are telling you something, the same thing as the bass line <laughs> and the rhythm is telling you. When you watch a film, the way they depict the screen, how far the, the subjects are apart is telling you literal distance between them. Mm-hmm. You know, we're looking for, we love stories as humans. Mm-hmm. We absolutely love stories. And that's why this idea of discounting anyone from the conversation, I think is a bad idea. Mm-hmm. The weird thing is the majority of people that do that see themselves as progressives. Mm. And my argument is that we've been judging people by their inclusion of a tribe for centuries. And now all we've done is gone, oh, now this tribe, for instance, male or your race, we've just drawn a line in the sand and said, if you're part of that tribe, Mm -hmm. then you don't get to say something. That's not progress. Mm -hmm. That's the same thing. We're judging people by how they look or how they are subscribed to a group that they had no choice over. Mm -hmm. What we should be going is, this is novel. I know, stick with me. How about we just judge people by what they say, think, and do. Mm. And it doesn't matter what tribe they're part of. If they act like an ass, then we react accordingly. Mm-hmm. That's what I, I'm not seeing now, which, which concerns me. And it's mm. compulsion of speech. What people don't realize is how long before the government says, oh, if, you, if you're saying something bad about the prime minister or president, that, that's not good either because mm. that's making civil unrest. And those are part of the same thing and people don't realize that. And I hold that in a much higher regard than whether... People don't think that my opinion is that, you know, highly rated. I don't care. You're but, thinking, where could this lead to? Like a yes. dystopian future. <laughs> exactly. We don't want, we work so like, hard to get like to this Like Mao point. or something. Yeah, yeah it, but that is it. And John Peterson always talks about order and chaos. Mm. And the, the antidote to order isn't necessarily chaos. And the order isn't necessarily the antidote to chaos and vice versa. Mm. You want to find that line between the two. Mm. At the more, moment, if you have too much order, too much policing, the natural progression is totalitarianism and fascism mm-hmm. because you get told exactly what you have to do, mm. you know? So anyway, that's, but I, I find it interesting, but you were talking about Stuart Gilchrist about the F-bomb. I've got an unusual playlist. Like I like to put my music in because like you, I started very generic. I mm-hmm. think that's natural. Yeah. You, tr- you try, find your voice and your theme as you go through. And I was like, the music they're telling me to play, I'm like, oh, it does not resonate with me. Like, I use the music as a tool, not just for me, but for them. But what? if I'm feeling good, like I have a What'd lot What'd you of play pop, then? Oh like, yeah. Like quite a lot of Kanye. Naughty words? Yeah, but this is what has just come up recently <laughs> because a few naughty words came in. I was like, I've noticed I've started like distracting people. I know when it's coming, you know? And I'll go like, now deep inhale, make a big sound as you do it and exhale so I'm covering the words. But I'm like, if I could have the choice, I'd rather no naughty words. I don't know why, uh-huh. but they are in there. Mm. I don't know. I don't know. I, that music, it's evocative. Yeah. You know, and it's got to be true to you. And, and those songs, I think, have their place. But yeah, I haven't made my decision up. What, what is your playlist kind of, what do you go with? My, mine is classical music. And I got, oh, I, I, gosh, I just, damn it, that's I, I, a good just one. I just stick with classical music. But, or I do like um, kind of trip hop type music. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. we cross over there. But yeah, that's yeah. exactly. Trip hop, I think, is great because it's that mm. bpm that's just right mm-hmm. but it's kind of funky it's kind of fun i used to have lyrics and um there was one uh, i went to a class that someone had alan watts playing oh, like him lovely speaking. over the top I, of oh yeah my God. Over the top. and i do love alan watts i i really love him but what i've realized is that and i've been in shavastans when people have played alan watts but i really think that the t- it, it, i'd much prefer the teacher saying something like mm-hmm. that as opposed to it being a recording yeah and i think that um you know, I, I, yeah, it just made me think about how music, I mean, music hugely affects how you feel, the ambiance. Yeah, ambi- ambi- yeah, and when when someone goes into class, I actually think, like, I have to have the smells on, whether it be incense or whatever Ooh, it is, yeah. the lighting right, and the music. That has to be on. To okay. me, To me, that's it's almost like they're coming into your house, even it's though... It's a trifecta, huh? My, my smell <laughs> game is not on point. Damn it. Yeah, See, go- I'm learning here. This is what I like about this. But man, uh, do you know the smell game? You've got you to be... I, I was carrying a diffuser around with me everywhere and just mm. would spill... Um, and some studios don't allow you to burn anything. 
Oh, no. No, you're not allowed to burn anything at all. Do you like a little sage or incense going around there? I love a bit of sage, but you. But so sometimes I burn it on the sly without telling them. Oh, no, man, no. you're a rebel. Look at this. Yeah. <laughs> you remind me of a skit I've always wanted to do of like the rock and roll yoga star. <laughs> Um, I kind of saw it as myself, you know, I was like, oh, maybe I'd take this to another level. Instead of being, like you said, generic, I like, I come in with leather trousers, no t-shirt on, smoking. <laughs> like get the Harley riding in, just squeaking in. All right, guys, everyone up, down dog. You call that down dog's disgust and burn him with a cigarette and leave, you know? <laughs> the bad yogi. Yeah, just some badass yeah, guy, you know? Yeah. Um, so, actually, that, that's a good thing to um, to ask you about now is uh, your workshops. I was chatting to Sue of Yoga mm-hmm. Hub. Lovely Sue. Loves- Great hair. Um, Great hair, amazing hair. Right? Yeah, amazing hair. Um, and I was like, she said, Oh, are you going to Doug's workshops? I'm not because I'm. Me and my oh, go- God, so, I thought you were yeah, coming. No, okay. me, me and my girlfriend were going. Oh, I got God, this girl as, again. As, as I said, like, you know, we were saying earlier before we start recording. Oh, I don't know what she's No, say. you so can't. I, <laughs> I, can't, I can't say this. I don't know if it's great, although now that I said you can't say it, now it sounds like it could be worse. So I'll say it. Okay, yeah, yeah. say it. But uh, no, I'm going to say it. Um, yeah, she, I'm not scared of her. Don't tell her I said it. My girlfriend is like, um, uh, she's like a, a project. As in, as in, what I'm getting at is, oh God. I did warn you. I know. I did warn you. No, Go on, on mate. You, you made your bed now. Go on. Okay. So it, we were saying earlier before we start recording that we spend so much time thinking about work, work, work and what we do. And it, it, she said, oh, well, let's go on holiday together in the summer. And the mm. first thing I thought of is which yoga studios can I email to teach workshops at or be a guest teacher? Not thinking, oh, where's nice to go for food in this holiday mm-hmm. holiday destination? Um, and it made me realize that I, I think like that all the time. I, yeah. I think constantly thinking about continuing what i'm doing and i and i need to i need to you have buckets in life you have your job you have your family your your lover Mm -hmm. your you know whoever that may be and um i think it's important that you give attention to that person so what i was saying with like as she's my a project for me is that i obviously want to make her really happy Mm -hmm. you know and you sometimes well i feel maybe as a man, I don't know, that I want to be the archetypal man and like make money and be successful and support her and stuff, right? Even though she doesn't need supporting, but I just like to be able to do things with her and not have to worry about money. But, and I I think men are foolish in thinking that that's all a woman wants, that if... if you work hard and you can then take them the odd weekend away, that's not as important, I don't think, as actually... When you get to the end of your day, you might be knackered listening to them, sitting down, listening to them, getting up in the morning, spending time with them, not just doing your own thing. And that's what I mean by um, giving her attention. Yeah. How did I do that, Doug? No, right? you, mate, you did well. I'm you know I was a little bit worried. I was a little worried for a while there. You had shovel in hand. There was a hole being dug and somehow... <laughs> You built a staircase. It was amazing to watch. It was a real roller coaster. Thanks, it was man. great being on this end. Just watching you hang a noose. Squirm. Hang a noose and then undo it. I was like, whew, that was close. No, you did great. But I also think you've highlighted there the difference, I think, innate in guys and girls and just how we communicate. Uh, I think we are quite pragmatic as males. We want to fix. We want to make better. And we don't realize that sometimes when someone says to us, you know, a girlfriend says, this was a bad day. We're like, okay, cool. So we'll fix it. Um, how can we help? How... Mm. They don't, they don't, sometimes they mean, can you just listen and say, yeah, you know, mm-hmm. that girl at work is a bitch. Like mm-hmm. sometimes that's more important to them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Know? Not that I condone that, but that's what I mean. I think sometimes they just want to be heard. Yeah. In, in a way, actually, it comes back to what we were talking about with yoga and the classes. I'm also starting to realize in class what makes people feel good. I think this is what we all want really is to be seen to be noticed, you know? And in my class, I try and make sure you get around and you adjust people even, not necessarily that they needed it or you go and give some support, but just make everyone in the field feel, everyone in the room feel like they were noticed. Mm. Because especially in the bigger cities, like you're talking about, and I think this comes up a lot, um, even in Sapiens, what you're reading about the troops of monkeys living together, that after a certain amount, we stop trusting. Mm -hmm. So in a small enough troop, we can go, Oh, I know so and so, therefore I can trust them. But when the group gets so big, it starts to actually make two different groups. Yeah. Because we go, I don't know that person so well. I haven't had that many interactions. Mm-hmm. And I think in big cities, we lose that connection with people. Mm-hmm. Craziest thing, I don't know if it's like it here, but on the tube in London, you bump someone, 
you often don't even say sorry and they don't even get offended. Mm -hmm. You just keep eyes down. Mm -hmm. And you know, the movie Crash has a great start where I think it says at the beginning, sometimes we get so lonely, we just want to meet someone or be acknowledged by someone and we literally crash into them just to get that notification. You know, I think that's an interesting, again, with this PC world, like, I don't know how you are as a male teacher adjusting females in class. This Mm -hmm. is starting to get like dangerous territory right Mm -hmm. and and it's such a sad thing like i do acro yoga too Mm. and my teacher always says she's like it's hard because people don't touch each other anymore Mm. because we're so scared of the ramifications and it's so Mm. sad because it's such a big part of us and i really noticed it going back to botswana my mom's a teacher and i'll go into a class and kids would run to me and like hug her and hug me and my initial reaction wasn't what a beautiful lovely interaction mm-hmm. i was like oh am i gonna get done like should i put up my hands and i was thinking yeah what a message are we sending kids mm-hmm. if we're not allowed to touch them we're almost making ourselves guilty by our actions mm. you know? so, so funny you said that doug uh, because my i was last week i was at a funeral and my cousin was there and he's a few years older than me and um, we look very similar and his son lucky is, guy he's <laughs> 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 uh, his son who's like five years old ran up to me and sat on my lap straight away and called mm. me daddy right and i i was like chuffed i thought oh this is kind of cool he calls me daddy and he's looking up at me and i didn't know where to put my hands i, I don't know how to hold a child Bad, I had, right no no i have no clue i have no um and i i had and he my cousin actually martin he's like kev's like sitting on his hands you know? <laughs> yeah because i'm just i'm i'm so um it's yeah, it's just that I'm just not not used to it, you know. Mm. I don't know how to do that, and and as you said, it's compounded by the fact that we're not used to touching people. Yeah. T- touching someone is a, in a, a, a platonic way, but an affectionate way is a real skill. Yeah, and if you don't do it, you can't be good at it. No. Um, yeah, but it's, it's a tricky one. It's because, a it's a minefield out there. Do you, do you know studios? And do you, I'm asking now. Do you know any mm. studios in London that have those little tickets that say, "Please don't assist me." No, yeah, but I give the option in my class all the time. I'm like, mm. if you don't want to be touched, put a hand on your belly or whatever now, just so I know ahead of time. And if I haven't asked that, mm. I usually won't adjust anyone, which is, mm. I don't know if that's a good, I guess uh, the awareness that, you know, people like Bikram allegedly have mm. spoiled it for us. Mm. You know, people have done horrendous things out there. I, I, I appreciate that. But I think what we're doing is letting those people we're making out as if those people are the rule, not the exception. Mm -hmm. And that's a shame. You Mm. know, as society, I don't think we're getting better for that. Mm. But yeah, it is, it it is a tricky thing. It really is. I mean, I I think, I actually think those cards are quite a good idea because um, I have said in the past that, oh, who put your hand up if you don't want to be adjusted. And someone right in the corner puts their hand up and I know it and I carry teaching the class and I forget who did it. He oh, put the hand up. So I'm like, right, I'm going to stay away from that corner. Yeah. And, and yeah, then, it's a shame because the guy next to him may have gone like, man, I love Kev's adjustments. Why is he? <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. It's, um, um, so tell us, well, I turn the light on because it's getting dark in here. Yeah. Tell us about your workshops then because they're called Warrior Workshop. Warrior Excel Workshop. Yeah, it's something I've been um, putting together for a while, a couple of years in, in the making, on and off. It's, uh, yeah, it's a combination of things very much that I'm interested in. Um, its inception was very much in uh, in Spain, actually, working on a job, and I realized... In well, Spain? Well, in Spain, yeah, we're, we're, again, there for Game of Thrones, and in a hotel room for nine, what was it, 19 weeks, something like that, and uh, really long hours, and I just became aware that I couldn't do it all. I couldn't weight train and stretch and uh, keep up with my fighting and do my gymnastics training separately. Mm. So I tried to culminate all of the things together, things I liked. And that's where this warrior yoga idea came up. Um, so putting together strikes from martial arts to keep your orientation good, your balance. Wow. And then some gymnastics conditioning to get strong. Because I really believe gymnastic conditioning is all about full body tension. Mm. And um, it's something we lose because we go to the gym, you just work chest or isolation. When you're talking about real power, it comes from the whole body. You look at power lifters, mm. uh, jiu-jitsu or martial arts it's how you use the whole body in conjunction with itself you know Mm. using the levers using the tension to your advantage and Mm -hmm. i found it very interesting jiu-jitsu by the way is like anti-yoga like they looked at the anatomy and were like in what ways do you compromise the joints best and that's how they came up with the moves you know so Mm -hmm. you arm bar someone you put their thumb in a certain orientation that arm is going to break if you carry on pulling 
-hmm. So it's like opposite of yoga where we're trying to find the orientation of the joints best stacked or in the place that's useful to the body, they're doing the opposite. So, Interesting. so these workshops are very much, I realized that teaching a class is very difficult uh, because people aren't used to these movement patterns. You know, most people aren't used to moving lefts and rights opposites, but if you start introducing legs and punches and kicks, it's all over the place. So the XL is very much an introduction to three cutters. It's actually one, but I divide it into three different things. And we're going to break down these moves and hopefully do the cutter together. I was furious to find out about a thing called Budokan, which is very similar with Shane Cameron. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so furious when I found out. I was like, I've nailed it. I've got something brand new. And as I'm having that thought, someone's like, it's just like Budokan. I was like, oh, upsetting. <laughs> but I, I actually, to keep the integrity of it, I don't watch any of his stuff because I want it to be from from my experience, you know, mm -hmm. and if it is similar, so be it. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, so that's what the workshop will be. We'll mm -hmm. be uh, covering those moves. And I think it's a really cool way to move. Mm -hmm. It's a new way to move. And I think if anything I've learned is that the more new ways you learn to move, the better you get at learning new moves. Yes. It doesn't have to be related to that thing, yep. but you keep testing yourself in different ranges. Don't get used mm -hmm. to one thing. Patrick Beach was talking about it being, you know, you do a lot of yoga, you do the same moves over and over again. Cool. You might get good at that, but you're looking to explore the body. And I, mm -hmm. I just believe that the human body is such an amazing vehicle. Mm -hmm. Like it moves in so many ways and will do whatever you tell it to, mm -hmm. you know, over enough repetition, it can do amazing things. Mm -hmm. So, you know, celebrate that while mm -hmm. you can. Because exactly. just like our lives, it's temporary. Mm -hmm. I've had a lot of injury in my life. So I'm like, every day I'm not injured. I'm like, you know, amen. Let's, mm -hmm. let's celebrate by moving. That's a great way to end, isn't it? Oh, wow. Well. Doug, man, that was, that was class, mate. Yes. I could chat to you for ages. Um, so if people want to find you, where would they go, Doug? Oh, wow. Good <laughs> setup. I like that segue. Uh, I've got a website. I try to keep it under the same banner. It's The Downward Doug, but make sure you go with The as Downward Doug instead of A Downward Doug or just Downward Doug because there are cheap imitations out there. Oh, man. So make sure you get The Downward Doug. On Instagram, it's the same. Uh, or on email, yoga at thedownwarddoug.com or just thedownwarddoug.com on website and you can check out retreats We've got a couple of those coming up this year trying to get them really going that's a tough thing to do but mm. um yeah sri lanka maldives definitely bali that one's locked in so if you want to join please give me a message and uh, come say hi thank you uh, thank you very much kev yeah man wait you're that is really good i didn't <laughs> think it would be that easy <laughs> there you go that's me chuckling at the end sorry <laughs> I uh, I got a big smile on my face editing this podcast because uh, I had such good fun with Doug. What a great guy! So um, yeah, check out um, Doug. He's going to be over in Dublin again very very soon, I'm sure. He also goes to Belfast as well to teach workshops. He's got retreats going on. You can check out his website and his social media. As always, any questions, any comments, any concerns, let me know. Even if you're offended by something, you can let me know. That's fine. You are free to express that and I'm free to listen. So um, it's always a pleasure to share this, this content with you guys and these stories, people's backgrounds that are involved in the yoga world. Um, so as always, thanks so much and I'll catch up with you next week.